Okay, back at you with another video here for the NBA main slate uh, here on Wednesday. Uh, so first, real quick, let's see what we did last night. So really, really frustrating night, to be honest. Um, you know, I hit some of my head-to-heads, but uh, missed basically all my double-ups as well as the tournaments. So it was, hold on, let me go to uh, non-head-to-head so you just see my lineup. Double-up, there you go. All right, so my final lineup was Trey Burke, Jamal Murray, Tyreek, Sabonis, Jokic, Lonzo, Rashawn Holmes, and Devin Booker. So, um, Lonzo Ball obviously uh, got injured uh, right before half. He actually came back out and started the second half, but was limping pretty noticeably, and they pulled him right away. So, again, injury bug hits me. Um, you know, nothing. nothing's more frustrating than DFS. Uh, then when when I get consistently hit with injuries, you know, it happened with with Nurkic to me a couple nights ago, and now Alonzo again. You know, I went on a streak uh, about a couple weeks ago where I had like three injuries in a row every single night. So just got to hope uh, the injury bug stays away from me because that's really frustrating. You know, if Alonzo ends up playing that second half, I think I was I would cash. I was pretty close to the uh, the double up lines. Trey Burke, that was just, I don't want to talk about it. I said in my video that I wasn't trusting these Knicks point guards. And near the end of the day, I just, a lot of the experts were loving him. And I, I just kind of got talked on him. I shouldn't have. It was, again, a mistake on my part. I, you know, I knew it was, you, you can't trust that situation. And I will never go back there again. The same thing with Tyreek. You know, I'm done with him. You know, this is the perfect matchup here. He started off hot, too, and just... He's. I don't know what's. I don't know what's up with him. He's. A, he doesn't look like the same player he was in Memphis last year. Uh, so I'm done with Tyreek Evans. Um, Jamal Murray again. I mean that was kind of frustrating. The Lakers. Denver game blew out as well. Uh, Sabonis. I mean I was all over him. Uh, he almost brought me to the cash again. He was low owned. You know I love this guy. I'll play him every single night. Um, so yeah, he was. He was very good. Rashawn Holmes. I talked about him for salary relief. Uh, he was very good, as well as Mason Plumley, who had a double double. I just didn't want to have Jokic and Mason Plumley in the same lineup. But Mason Plumley, I think, won for like thirty fantasy. I think he almost outscored Jokic himself. Um, so I hope you guys uh, watch that video and got those two value plays in Plumley and Holmes, as well as the bonus. And I hope they carried you to the cash. All right. So after a pretty frustrating night, I'm ready to get back into. Uh, the slate for tonight. We've got a pretty pretty nice game, slate of games. I think 10 games or so. All right, let's start at the top point guard today. So Harden 11-6. You know, the, the price is getting up there. He had, obviously, a huge game against the Wizards, but, you know, that's just more, I think, uh, of the matchup plus Washington, or plus the game went into overtime, too. So, I mean, I'm definitely still considering Harden. If Chris Paul is out... You know, then, then I got to heavily consider Harden and Eric Gordon again. You know, do I want to play both? Do I want to play one? I'll kind of have to decide. I really, I really kind of hope Chris Paul plays because I kind of want to avoid the situation right now. But, you know, if Chris Paul ends up being out, I think I, I got to cons heavily consider Harden and Eric Gordon again. Westbrook at 10 9. Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad salary here. I think it'll be pretty low owned. You know, the match against Cleveland's pretty good. There is blowout risk, though. You know, I don't mind Westbrook. I just, I think I'm targeting other players uh, today. Kemba, 9-3, just, the matchup's great. You know, the price has gone down a little bit here. You know, he has shown pretty big upside, just, I don't know. I'm considering Kemba today, for sure. It's just, I never get him right. The one time I played him, he went for like 35. Uh, but, I mean... I love targeting players against the Hawks, so Kemba is certainly in play. John Wall, I mean, I love this po this Pelicans Wizards game. These are two of the teams that I love targeting, and they're playing against each other. Uh, you know, I think the over under is let's see, two forty two today with a six point spread. So this game should stay close. And yeah, I love this is this is my favorite game of the night by far. You know, John Wall. 9.1 the salary is a little little up there, but you know, I think he's worth it today. I'm I'm heavily considering John Wall. Let's see. The mid-range, there's not a whole lot to like here. 
Well, I mean, you know how I feel about the next point guard situation. Staying away. One of them's going to have a good game. Literally a 33.33% chance of which one's going to be. Flip a coin. You know, it's it's just completely random. I'm staying away from it. You know, Trier, I think uh, he'll be somewhat popular just because he had that huge game. But it's literally, you don't know. On it. They're going to play the hot hand. So just got to stay away from it. All right, let's move on to the shooting guard position. And Drew Holiday. So he's had a couple, you know, kind of let down games. You know, not not the best games here. Uh, he did only shoot the ball four t- or eight times against Boston. Shot the ball four for eight. So I do think he's going to go back to, you know, shooting the ball you know, 15 to 20 times a game. And this, I mean, I just love targeting players against Washington. Uh, they play no defense at all. 8.4K, a little too cheap for Drew Holiday. I mean, I'm all over him today. Let's see, Beal at 8K. Again, I mean, I think this still, he got a price bump, but I still think it's a little too too cheap for this matchup, especially. You know, Beal is just going to play, he did see 50 minutes. That was his overtime, so 45. So 44 and 45 minutes the last two games. Uh, that's pretty insane. You know, if Beal is going to continue to play those type of minutes, basically play the whole game, I'm I'm 100% considering him as well. Let's see, Jimmy Butler. A little frustrating because I was I was on him kind of first couple games here, and he didn't do much. Got off him against Brooklyn. He went up for 63. So I'm a little torn on what to do with Jimmy Butler. You know, the matchup is very good. But there is some blowout risk here against the Knicks for sure. He does have some pretty good upside. I like the price at 7.8. So definitely am considering Jimmy Butler. Let's see, D'Angelo Russell. This is this is the biggest boomer bust guy I've ever seen. You know, 29, 14, 62. I mean, he has that upside. So in tournaments, you gotta consider it. The, the Jazz, not the best matchup though. I'll be looking elsewhere today. Let's see, Tim Hardaway Jr., 6.6. You know, I do kind of like the salary here, and you know, Philly has been a team that um, you know, I thought there would be a pretty good defensive team early in the year, but they've been a team that you kind of want to target players against. Uh, so Hardaway, Hardaway and Cantor would be the two Knicks. Again, I'm not playing anyone else besides Hardaway or Cantor on the Knicks. Uh, so those two would be the two I'd most interested in for sure. Let's see, Eric Gordon uh, only would have interest in him if Chris Paul's out. Now, it's 5.8K, that is a little pricey, um, you know, even if Chris Paul's out, but you know, I, I would still consider him. see you know Nick Batum here at 4.8k you know that's kind of just more of a salary thing but he's just been really bad actually just looking through his game logs I mean this is the matchup where he could you know he could go off but I still I don't know if I can do it even at that salary let's see you know, Trier, I think he's going to be popular, but again, I'm staying away from these Knicks uh, point guards. They're just, you just don't know. And I'm just, I'm just done with the situation. Frustrates me to no end. So, not going near any of those guys. Uh, let's see here. Small forward, Giannis at 12,000. I think he's going to be very low owned today, just because people are going to be uh, targeting other stars. You know, the match is pretty good here. But again, there is some definitely definite uh, blowout risk. Um, so if you want to play the GPP aspect of the low ownership, I think Giannis, uh, you could take a shot on him. Let's see, Aaron Gordon. So this is this is some pretty big news. He's listed as questionable. They said he's going to be game time decision. Uh, it's kind of tough because this is the last game of the night too, the 10 p.m. game. So we probably won't know until after lock. You know. If he does get ruled out, you know, that boosts Busevich a lot. And then I would like the two value plays in Jonathan Simmons and Jonathan Isaac. Uh, both of them would be very appealing to me if Aaron Gordon's out. Let's see, Miritich. You know, I like this salary a lot at 6.9K. You know, he's seeing all the minutes he can handle right now. And again, I, I love targeting players against the Wizards. Um, so I think Miritich is firmly in play. Jabari, a little frustrating here because I was on him. Earlier in the season when he was putting up kind of 20, 25 fantasy points a game. 
And I'd play him like every single night. And I kind of just got off him eventually. And now he's starting to finally turn it up. Um, but, you know, the minutes are there. The revenge game narrative, if you want to play that aspect. Uh, so I think Jabari is in play at 6.6k. See, Otto Porter Jr. again. Uh, this game, I really like targeting. You know, he's more of a secondary piece in this offense. You know, kind of stands in the corner at times, which is a little, a little scary. Especially because his, his salary is getting up there now, 5.9. Um, but definitely, I think he's still in play. Let's see. So Jonathan Isaac, here we go, 3.7. Again, I would be on him. And let's scroll down to, I think it's a 3.2. Uh, yep, 3.2 Jonathan Simmons. So he picked up the start last game against Golden State. So, you know, if Aaron Gordon's out, you know, I think they, they might start. Uh, they started Simmons last game anyway. I think they might start Simmons and Jonathan Isaac. Uh, so I would both uh, have interest in both of them if uh, Aaron Gordon's out. Move on to the power forward. And we got Anthony Davis here at the top at 11-4. You know, it's scary because it seems like this guy gets injured every single game, goes to the locker room. So it's very scary. But if he can just stay on the court, not get injured, you know, I think this is, this is the smash spot for Anthony Davis. I think he puts up 80 fantasy points if he does not get injured. Um, so I love... Uh, Anthony Davis today as the pay-up uh, star of the day. 7.2. So, I mean, Montrezl Harrell, you guys know how I feel about him. Kind of the exact same players, DeMontis Sabonis, comes off the bench and just crushes it every single time. You know, he kind of was, um, you know, more matchup. You know, they kind of played him more when they played small ball teams. But now, I mean, it's you know, he played Memphis. You know, a pretty big team with Gasol at center, and he played 35 minutes. So he's kind of matchup proof now. They're just going to give him minutes no matter what. And the salaries up there were, I think he's going to be pretty much unowned again. Again, kind of like Sabonis. And I will be going right back to the ball with Montrezl Harrell. Um, again, I really like that he's going to be low owned. Just like Sabonis was yesterday, I called that. And Sabonis went off for 50. Um, yeah, so I, I think I'm going right back to the wall here with Montrezl Harrell. Again, Miritich and Randall. I think I'd prefer Miritich. Randall. I kind of only target him when Anthony Davis is out. You know, he did get kind of limited to 21 minutes there. So I don't think Randall is in play if Anthony Davis is playing. Let's see. Larry Nance, I think he's going to be pretty chalky. They said he's going to pick up the start again. So we got David Nwaba will be out again, as well as George Hill. Um, you know, he's, he's closed, closing in on a return, but George Hill will be out as well. Larry Nance played 38 minutes when he picked up the start against Minnesota. So... The issue I kind of have with him is Minnesota played big, so they definitely needed Nance to play all the minutes he could. You know, OKC, I mean, they have they have this the big center in uh, Stephen Adams, but kind of a little more small ball after that. You know, Jeremy Grant, uh, you know, they could they could throw C.D. Osmond on him. So, you know, I don't think Larry Nance plays 38 minutes. I think he sees maybe 30, 32 minutes. Uh, but again, I think he's going to be really chalky, and I still really like the play at 5,300. You know, this guy just fills up the stat sheet. Um, but again, the only thing I'd worry about is maybe his, lim his minutes get limited a little bit. You know, I don't think we'll see the full 38. But I still love the play at 5,300. I mean, he's going to be chalky, but I think I will be eating the chalk with uh, Larry Nance Jr. The whole Dario Saric, Taj Gibson situation, it seems like they just flip, uh, you know, having a, big, having a good game, having a bad game, good game, bad game. Um, so, you know, Saric, let's see. He had the bad game last time, so he'll probably have the good game. And yeah, Taj Gibson, he had the you know the better game last game. He'll probably have the the worst game. I mean, it's just a that's just a coin flip too. So I'm staying away from that situation. Let's see, Dwayne Dedman, 4K. You know, I th I kind of like that sale right here. <clears throat> you know, I, uh, targeting centers against Charlotte has been a pretty good thing to uh, to do here in DFS. You know, him and Alex Lund are both very very cheap, so. For salary relief, I don't mind taking a shot at one of those two. And again, let's talk to go to Rashawn Holmes. I talked about him in the last video. Again, he's going to play strictly backup five, but 
he's been very, very productive. And, you know, he's going to see 15, maybe 20 minutes if, if Aiden gets in foul trouble. And this guy just produces when he's out there. Um, so I do like Rashawn Holmes, again, for salary relief at close to minimum price here. Let's move on to the center position. You know, you got Embiid at the top. The matchup is ideal again, though. There is blowout risk, but this game stays close. I think Embiid can push for, you know, 70 fantasy points. So you definitely got to consider him. Now you got Carl Anthony Towns, who this is a sneaky spot for him. I think he's going to be... I think he's going to be virtually unowned, uh, kind of like Montrezl Harrell. But I think Towns, you know, is very, very sneaky, and I think he could have a huge game here. You know, Spurs, the Spurs struggle against athletic scoring bigs. You know, Willie Cauley-Stein has put up a couple big games against the Spurs. And, you know, I think Carl Anthony Towns, you know, I kind of like this play for GPPs a lot. I think he's going to be uh, unowned, and I think he has huge upside today. You know, I don't know if I can go there in my main cash lineup. But if I make, you know, a second lineup uh, for a GPP, I think I will definitely play Carl Anthony Towns just because the ownership. You got Vucevic at 8.3K. You know, I've been all over him the last few games here. And uh, he has not let me down. If Aaron Gordon's out, that just boosts him even more. Uh, he's just too cheap. You know, he's putting up, you know, 50 fantasy points almost every night here. So uh, he's just too cheap. I think it'll be kind of chalky, but, you know, I really like that play at Vucevic. Nurkic, again, I got hit with him with the injury bug. Uh, in only 15 minutes, he put up 21 fantasy points. Again, he got injured. I did not see any minutes in the second half. But I don't mind uh, actually targeting both centers here if you want to do uh, do that approach, uh, playing Nurkic and Vucevic together. I think that's certainly viable. Both are pretty. Both are too underpriced, in my opinion. And then you got Ennis Cantor at 6.8. You know, he's going to he's gonna have a tough time with Embiid. But they're going to need him to play all the minutes he can handle. Mitchell Robinson, he'll probably foul out in two minutes. That guy, you know, is just insane with his fouls. So Ennis Cantor will probably be forced to play some big minutes again here. Um, so I do I do really like that seller at 6.8K. I think he has upside. Tristan Thompson, I mean, I just don't know with this guy anymore. He's just been insane. I mean, I haven't played him once this season. Maybe that's a mistake, but... I. I don't know. Again, he's playing insane minutes here. I think he'll be somewhat popular, but I really respect the defense of Steven Adams. So I will not be going there with Tristan Thompson today. Let's see. Here, one more cheap guy I want to talk about again is Alex Len. So yeah, Deadman and Len are very cheap here. You know, both of them should. I mean, Len will probably play 15 to 20 minutes. Deadman 20 to 25. So, you know, Deadman's 4K, Alex Lund's 3.6. I think it's def – I'm definitely considering playing one of these guys in my lineup just because they're so cheap. And then you also got Cody Zeller at 4.1. You know, he got limited against Milwaukee, but Milwaukee plays a little more small ball. You know, they recently played Atlanta, and he played 28 minutes. You know, again, Atlanta plays big. So Cody Zeller will probably need to play you know, close to 28 minutes again. And a 4.1, that's a little too cheap. Um, so I do like that play. Okay. So let's see here. First, let me do, before I get in my core, let's do a game stack that I really like. Again, this Washington-New Orleans game. I think you can certainly stack this game up. Um, it's a little tough to do if you're stacking the game up with Anthony Davis. But I think you could do something like, uh, let's see, something like this with... There's Miritich here. And then you could do, you know, maybe Otto Porter. And you could do Brad Beal. Something like that. I think it would be a very good game stack for tournaments. Um, you know, I, again, I just love this game. Okay, so let's get into my core. And it's tough because I, I like a lot of guys. I'm kind of undecided of what I want to do. Um, so first, let's go to the stud that I really want, Anthony Davis. You know, 11-4. If he stays out of, if he you know doesn't get injured, I think he has a huge game. Um, you know, I really like Montrez Harrell today at 7.2K. I think he's going to be pretty unowned. Uh, Jonathan Simmons, again, if if he picks up the start and Aaron Gordon's out, um, I do really like him. Let's see. 
I love Drew today at 8.4. Um, again, I love targeting that game. Jonathan Simmons, you know, and then I like either John Wall or Brad Beal, one of those two. And then you can go value from there with like Rashawn Holmes, Jonathan Isaac, something like that, and uh, make a lineup from there. And then I also really like, again, I really like, um, let's see, I really like Brad Beal. I really like uh, Larry Nance Jr. Um, let's see, I really like the centers. I like Vucevic a lot. I like Nurkic. I like Cantor. So again, those would probably be the guys that I'll be filtering through and deciding for my final lineup. Um, again, I, the Washington New Orleans game. I'm definitely, you know, I love targeting that game. And then, you know, the value plays with Jonathan Simmons, with Rashawn Holmes, with Jonathan Isaac, and then the centers. You know, I really like Vucevic. I really like Nurkic. I really like Cantor. And then maybe a, the, those cheap, one of those cheap Atlanta bigs with Deadman or Len. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what I'm deciding on today. And then, obviously, Larry Nance as well. I think he'll be pretty chalky. So those, I think, are, are the players I'm definitely considering for, for my lineup today. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have been enjoying the content, please like this video. Subscribe. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section down below. It's also important to follow me on Twitter. It will be in the description below. And, yeah, I will be back tomorrow um, for some Thursday NBA. So I'll see you guys then.